I've had a lot of requests lately, a lot of people reaching out to Gail and I on YouTube, on our channel, to ask uh, our advice or our thoughts on driving this 45-foot motorhome RV up and down the mountain. videos that I'll leave uh, the links up here about just driving tips <clears throat> but I thought it was interesting that a lot of people are really nervous and have questions about some of the thoughts of going up and down big mountains and right now we're in the hills of Kentucky and actually just cross over to the the hills of uh, Tennessee entering into uh, Knoxville and I think the, as far as the going up, it's pretty self-explanatory. I think today's actually a good example, not just because of the hills, but because it's also raining. And raining and speed and hills are not a good combination. Uh, we're coming up to a curve right here where I'm coming down and we've hit, uh, in essence, a, a speed limit saying the yellow sign saying trucks not to go beyond 60. I take those for RVs as well. So this curve that I'm taking right now is a good example of I slow down to the speed that trucks are going as well. And as soon as I come out of the curve I just hit my, I, I use a lot of cruise control so I'm using the, the cruise to, to uh, keep me in check. Now going up the hill the biggest thing is you're going to, most of the time, you're going to encounter trucks that are going much slower than you are. And uh, because they have a, a heavier payload, um, a lot of times there'll be a truck lane that there'll be an extra right hand lane for the trucks to go in. I will try to stay out of that lane and try to stay in the middle lane unless I see a truck coming up on my rear. I always put big trucks in uh, in the place of their professionals. I need to get out of the way. So if I see a truck coming up in my lane, coming up behind me, I get over. Most of the time though, because I'm lighter, I'm usually passing them up the hills. The major mistake that most RVers make is that when you get past the truck up the hill, they'll, you move over like you normally would in passing them, but once they come up the hill, that same payload that slows them down is going to speed them up. So a lot of times I just try to stay in the, in the same lane to let them be able to come back down without having to ride their brakes and get in their way. Um, the other issue that I have that helps me is when you start coming down, you have it on cruise control. More than likely, as you start, as your weight and your the, the, the level of the slope begins to build speed, you'll break out of that speed control, cruise control ability. So every diesel pusher that I know of, most every diesel pusher, has a... Um, uh, in, es in essence, a uh, a brake. A, uh, uh, for some reason, I just lost the term. Engine but brake. Engine brake uh, a two-level engine brake. Most of the time, what that does is that takes your exhaust and slow and helps you to bring the engine and slow yourself down. Most of the time, I can hit level one and hit that and not even have to apply my brakes. It, it will literally slow me down enough to where I'm staying within the speed limit fine. Some slopes, however, are so um, significant that I have to go to level two. Now 
Now to engage your engine or exhaust brake, you have to hit your brake and take yourself out of cruise. And that will uh, engage the exhaust brake. So, for instance, if you're out west and the Rockies, there's a good chance you're gonna have to have step level two engine brake. The whole thing that I think is the most important thing is to pay attention to the pro drivers around you and stay out of their way. Don't try not to pass on the right side and try to give them all the room that they need. We're going right now, we're currently going down a hill and these are sometimes in construction, you'll see where it says truck stay in the left lane because of certain construction. It's things like that that you just gotta ultra pay attention to and and you know just focus on what you're doing. It's you're not in a car. So there's a lot of GVW, a lot of uh, 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 you know, just G-force, not G-force, you know, just gravity pulling you, pushing you, um, you know, so you, the, the, the essence is that when you're going down, use your engine brake, try not to use your pedal brake as much as possible. For instance, I'm in this right now, coming down this hill. So I'm going to go ahead and engage level one engine brake. I hit my gas, I hit my brake. And I allow my engine brake there it went and I just I'm just I'm not even touching my brake right now the reason it's important not to touch your brake as much as possible is obviously the they heat up and they can heat up to the degree that you actually lose your brake power but they can actually heat up to the place that you uh, they'll catch on fire so it's very very important that you uh, you know use your engine brake as much as possible. Now, once I'm out of the the slope and I'm flat, then I go back into my cruise, get back on the cruise, and just giving plenty of distance between me and the truck in front of me, and also making sure to keep my vision on my rear view mirrors to make sure that I'm not getting in the way of a truck that number one has got more speed than me but number two might be out of control so it's just paying attention and uh, and knowing your circumstance and knowing the tools that you got and I hope that that helps a little bit of driving tip for you today Bless you, my